Hi everyone. In this video, I will be demonstrating how you can determine the number of factors associated with a set of measured variables using SPSS. Now, instead of relying on uh, the classic eigenvalue cutoff rule or the scree plot, which are built into SPSS, what I wanted to do is to demonstrate the use of the map test. And now, unfortunately, the map test is not actually built into SPSS, uh, but you can obtain some syntax in order to perform the analysis uh, if you go over to Brian O'Connor's website and ob obtain a, a copy of it. So what I'm going to show you in this video is how to obtain a copy of that uh, syntax and then come back into SPSS and run the analysis. Just kind of keep in mind too that the map test uh, is just one of various options that are available for determining the number of factors. Yes, there is the classic eigenvalue cutoff rule and the scree plot that are, are already um, part of SPSS, but those uh, procedures do have uh, various problems associated with them that are pretty well documented within the literature. So the map test is one of the uh, better alternatives. Um, and then there's also parallel analysis, which is uh, another one. So bas basically, uh, both the map test and parallel analysis are really two uh, more ideal approaches to determining the number of factors. So the data set that we're working with right here is um, from the uh, Hollingser and Swineford data set. Uh, this is a classic data set. Basically, we have various measures of, of kind of intellectual functioning. We've got uh, you know visual perception, this cubes and lozenges variable. We've got paragraph completion, sentence completion, and word meaning. And so I'm going to include a link to this data set underneath the video description so you can download uh, and follow along. So to obtain a copy of the syntax, what we're going to do is go to Brian O'Connor's uh, website right here. And you'll notice, too, that you know down at the bottom, you'll see uh, various um, uh, files that, that will allow you to carry out both parallel analysis and map uh, using SPSS, SAS, and there's MATLAB. Um, and you'll see the, some of the documentation of uh, the map test and uh, parallel analysis uh, can be found in this article right here. Uh, so what we're going to do, though, is we're going to go down. And if you look at the uh, bottom of your screen, we're going to go over here where it says SPSS. It's a little tricky down here. I'm going to highlight that map.sps. And that is basically a syntax file. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to download that syntax file uh, to your computer. So I'll right click. And you know, I'll just click on save link as, and you'll see that I already have it downloaded to this particular folder right here. Um, so just click on save and there you go. So then the next step, once you've done that, all you need to do is to go into SPSS and open that syntax file. So in my encouragement or my, yeah, I would encourage you uh, to, um, to only have one, sin one uh, data file open uh, when you're running the map test. Um, I just find that it's less cumbersome and less problematic. Uh, so what I'll do is I'm going to just stick the, with this data set right here. We'll go to File, Open, and then, then go down to uh, Syntax. So I'll click on that. And then we'll click on the uh, Syntax file in my folder, and I'll click on Open. And there you go. So you'll see that there's a description. There are various descriptions of how you can um, get the data in. There's method one where you can type in a correlation matrix. Most folks don't do that. Most of them want to read the data uh, from uh, either their computer or an active data file. Um, and and rea in reality, that's what we're going to be focusing on right here, which is method two, which is reading the active data file. So I'm going to scroll down, and you'll see that there's a method one right here. You'll see there's an asterisk. And basically, the asterisk in front of it is just basically makes it all a comment. So I don't actually don't want to use uh, method one. So I'm putting an asterisk there in the syntax, uh, which was the default already, uh, just showing you that that is a comment. Uh, if I go down here, I, I also don't want to uh, have this compute from uh, the uh, correlation matrix that's provided right there. So I'm going to make this a comment as well. So on line 44, I'll put an asterisk there. And then when we scroll down a little bit further, you'll see it says method two, all right? And you'll see that there's a comment in front of it, um, the asterisk in front of it, making all of this right here a comment. But you'll see on this line right here on line 61, there's also an asterisk and basically signifying that this is a comment. So the comment is just basically 
there to make sure that uh, if you are running the analysis, maybe using one of these alternate approaches to getting the data in, that it's not going to uh, treat um, a given statement as something that needs to be read. But for this, I do need to get rid of this comment. So I'm going to go to six, uh, line 61 right here, and I'm going to delete that uh, asterisk. And so now you can see that all of this highlights. So you'll see we've got get CR uh, forward slash file equals asterisk. The asterisk is basically referring to the current working um, file. And you'll see uh, it's just basically talking, there's uh, missing data uh, set to omit. Uh, um, then we've got VAR equals. And then right here, this is where you're going to put your variable names. You can type them in, in directly. Or if you have um, a sequ you know, basically a series of, of names in, in an order right here, like we've got visual perception all the way to word meaning right here, then I can just type in uh, this visual perception variable, then two, and then word meaning right there, and then that will um, that will also do the trick. So I can either type all the variable names in, or I could just type in right here, uh, vis uh, perception right there, visual perception, uh, which is spelled V-I-S-A-P-E-R-C. That's the the variable name. Then two, and then word mean right there and you'll want to make sure that there is a period at the end of this line if there's no period you, you're going to have a problem so at this point that's all there is um, everything else is set up to perform the computations so what we'll do now is we'll go to edit select all and then i'll write then uh basically excuse me let me try that one more time edit select all and then click on the green arrow and so now we've got our output for our map test. So as you're looking at this, you'll see, first off, we've got up here, we've got uh, the eigenvalues. This is from a, an initial principal components analysis. So if you were running a principal components analysis uh, in SPSS, just going through the, the factor analysis menu and so forth, these would be the values that you would get. Then you'll see we've got down below, we've got average partial correlations. And in this list right here, we've got basically uh, sum of squared correlations or, or squared partial correlations. So the first right here where it says zero, this is basically denoting that no components have been extracted. So the process uh, in terms of the map goes like this that we start off by just computing the sum of squared zero order correlations. Uh, and that is what this first line basically contains. This is the average, or I should have said as, uh, average. It's the average of the squared uh, zero order correlations among all of our variables. Then on the next line right here, you'll see we've got one. And what happens is, is that the, uh, the program essentially carries out a principal components analysis and extracting one principal component, okay? And then from there, uh, what happens is, is a computation of a partial correlation matrix where we have partial correlations among all of our uh, measured variables. And what's being partial is that uh, first principal component or that lone principal component in this particular case. And then from there, it's just a computation of the square of those uh, partial, uh, the average of those, uh, the average of the squared partial correlations. It's kind of a mouthful. So that's what this second line is right here. So that's the value that you have right here. Then we've got uh, two. So in this particular case, there's a reanalysis with two uh, principal components that are um, extracted, and then essentially computing a partial correlation matrix where the two principal components are partialed from the associations among all of our measured variables. Those partial correlations are squared and then average, and that's what this uh, this value is right here. So the average of the squared partial correlations uh, when, uh, when two principal components are removed is 0 0.1025. Then obviously you can see we go to the third uh, where three uh, principal components are extracted uh, and then computing the square, the average of the squared uh, partial correlations in that particular case. And that's where we get this uh, 0.251, 2, uh, 0.2551. So 
the long and short of it is, is that we can use this procedure in order to identify um, a candidate number of factors that may account for the intercorrelations among our variables. And all we're really looking for then is the uh, smallest um, of the uh, squared the smallest of the average squared partial correlations. Like I said, it's kind of a mouthful. Uh, and so basically, if you're looking at these values right here, we would expect that the largest of these values would only occur when there's no uh, principal components uh, extracted. Then we have with the one extracted, this is um, the average of those squared partial correlations. And then with two principal components, you can see that it's 0 0.1025. So that's smaller than the, uh, than the previous step. And then when we move to the uh, extracting three principal components and calculating this, those, the average of those squared partial correlations, it actually goes back up. So the smallest value among all of this set right here is for a two component solution. And so that would be um, our, our estimate of the number of factors that would account for the relationships among our measured variables. So then we can use that in conjunction with other uh, approaches. Again, you can use the scree plot. Um, if you if you uh, really want to, you could use the uh, Kaiser criterion, basically the eigenvalue cutoff rule. Uh, my suggestion too would also to be consider to consider using uh, parallel analysis. But uh, again, that's not built into SPSS, which creates a bit of a problem. But if you do go back to uh, O'Connor's website, uh, you can obtain a copy of uh, of that syntax and run the analysis. And I actually already have a video on that, and so I'll include a link to that underneath the video description. So that pretty much uh, wraps up our uh, presentation, and I appreciate you watching.